as the last time we discussed this thing that when you do oxidation of alkenes what happens is that uh, that the double bond completely breaks and when the double bond breaks uh, and this is about strong oxidation remember alkenes would undergo two types of oxidations one would be mild oxidation and the other one would be would be strong oxidation mild oxidation is diols are going to be formed a uh, double bond and it will turn into a single bond and OH groups will get added to it. So wherever you see double bonds, OH groups are going to get added to it. And strong oxidation was that double bonds are going to completely, completely break. And uh, there would be three, three scenarios when the double bond breaks. It's either that the double bond has two hydrogens, the carbon has two hydrogens, it's going to turn into carbonation and water. And the other one was that it has a carbon chain with an H, then that double bonded carbon atom will turn into an, a carboxylic acid. And the double bonded carbon, if it has two carbon chains, then the double bonded carbon will turn into a, it will turn into a ketone. So, so there were three different scenarios that you're dealing with. So whenever you do oxidation, you're going to look at those three scenarios. So if I have a molecule and let's have this, uh, I've got this molecule. TK, it's got it's got double bonds. Here's another double bond. Uh, followed by. single bond and another double bond and there's a carbon chain over here and let's say there's a carbon chain over here as well so the question is what's going to happen to this molecule when oxidation happens so all the double bonds are going to get they're going to get broken so this one is going to break this one is also going to break uh this one is also going to break so all of them are going to break and you could, you'll be focusing on these carbon atoms over here what happens to this carbon atom and what happens to the carbon to this one so the first part is this carbon atom is bonded to one carbon chain so this is what's going to happen to it that since it's bonded to one carbon chain the first thing is it's going to break off and the only thing that would happen is would happen to this carbon atom. If it's bonded to one carbon chain, it will be turned into a carboxylic acid. Remember, one carbon chain, it turns into a into a carboxylic acid. Uh, so that's with one carbon chain. What about this other carbon atom? Uh, this one, so let's assume that this has broken off. So that's gone, right? So I'm just going to copy paste this. I mean, the end over here is gone. Okay, yeah, that's gone. The carbon is gone. You've broken it. Now, what happens to the remaining two carbon atoms? Uh, so let's focus on this carbon atom as well. Uh, so let's assume that this entire thing has broken off. So the first thing is, what's going to happen to this carbon atom? It's bonded to two carbon chains. It's got a carbon chain over here and a carbon chain over here. It's going to turn into a, into a ketone. And what's going to happen to this carbon atom? This carbon atom is bonded to just one carbon chain. So it will turn into a, like the double bond breaks, it's going to turn into a carboxylic acid. So that's, I mean, this is this part. This one over here is this part over here. TK focus on focusing on these two carbon atoms. And then you have finally this, uh, this thing over here. What's going to happen to that? So, so copy pasting that. Remember, you had a carbon atom over here. I'm going to draw that carbon atom in. Uh, let's make it in blue. So that's, you had a carbon atom over here. 
the double bond would break and this part would break off. I mean, this thing would would be gone from the middle. So, so you'll have a carbon atom. It's bonded to one carbon chain. So it will turn into a carboxylic acid. What about this double bond? This double bond would also break. What's going to happen to these two carbon atoms? So the double bond is going to break. The two carbon atoms are bonded to just a single carbon chain. So they'll turn into a carboxylic acid molecule as well. So they're going to turn into a carboxylic acid molecule as well. And that's the product of the oxidation uh, that you're going to get. Uh, is this clear? Uh, Hari, is this clear? Yes, sir. So that is oxidation of alkenes, strong oxidation of alkenes. The other part is, like if you go back, and let's move on from oxidation of alkenes. The other oxidation that we should talk about is we're going to talk about all the oxidation reduction reactions. And that is about alcohols. So we're going to talk about oxidation of alcohols in one go because that is also all of this oxidation is interlinked. So we're going to talk about oxidation of oxidation of alcohols. Now, alcohols, you've got, you've got three types of alcohols. Alcohols are substances that have uh, OH in them. Because you've got a carbon atom, carbon chain, and it's got, it's got an OH group attached. So that's what an alcohol is. So you've got three types of alcohols. They are primary alcohols. Now, what are, what are primary alcohols? Primary alcohols are in which with a carbon atom, but that carbon atom is bonded to just one carbon chain. The other, I mean, the carbon has two hydrogen atoms, that's it. I mean, if you see a carbon within, within which and it's got two hydrogen atoms, that's a, that's a primary alcohol. And similarly, you have secondary alcohols. Secondary alcohols are, so secondary, Alcohol. Secondary alcohols are that you've got an OH with a carbon atom and it's bonded to two carbon chains. It's got a carbon chain on this side, it's got a carbon chain on, on this side as well. And there's only one H. And you also have tertiary alcohols. TK, you've got I see you've got you've got tertiary alcohols as well. Tertiary alcohols are that the carbon atom is bonded on all three sides by uh, by OH groups. So that's what a tertiary alcohol looks like. Uh, and remember, it's all, I mean, you're going to focus on this alpha carbon. The alpha carbon is the one that's uh, on which uh, the functional group is attached. So that's your alpha carbon. So uh, you put three types of alcohols. Uh, primary, you got a secondary that it's bonded to two uh, carbon chains and you got a tertiary which is bonded to three carbon chains. So first thing is you should learn how to identify what type of alcohols you've got. So I've got a molecule and that molecule is, uh, let's say it's, it's, it's something like this. And it's got all these OH groups attached. So there's an OH group that's attached over here. There's an OH group that's attached over here. There's an OH group that's attached here and here. And I've got an OH group that's attached over here. So the first thing is I need to identify which ones are primary, which ones are secondary, and which ones are tertiary alcohols. So the first one over here, what type of alcohol is that? I mean, if you focus focus on the carbon atom over here, 
Like if you focus on this carbon atom, it's bonded to just one chain, like one carbon chain. I mean, it's going to have two hydrogens. The hydrogens are not drawn in the skeletal formula. So there are probably going to be two hydrogens to it. Okay, but you don't show hydrogens in the skeletal formula. So this carbon atom is only bonded on one side by a carbon chain. So this is the one with one carbon chain. This is the first one. This is your primary alcohol. Is this clear? Alicia, clear? Hani, is this clear? Yes, sir. Honey, is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay, what about uh, this one? You got this other. Achha, this other OH, again, it's bonded to a carbon chain that's only bonded to one single carbon chain. Like this carbon is only bonded to, on one side by a carbon chain. There must be, there are probably going to be two hydrogen atoms next to it. So this one is also a primary alcohol. Uh, what about this OH? Focus on this carbon atom. It's bonded. So this carbon atom over here, it's bonded on two sides by a carbon chain. So this is a secondary alcohol. What about this OH? This OH is focus on this carbon atom over here. And this carbon atom is bonded on three sides by carbon chains. So this one is your tertiary alcohol. You got this carbon atom, uh, this OH. It's bonded to a carbon atom. And that carbon atom is bonded to two carbon chains. So this one is your secondary alcohol. So the first thing is you have to decide which ones are your primary, which, one, which ones are your secondary, and which ones are your tertiary alcohols. There are going to be three types of alcohols. All three are going to undergo different types of oxidation. So, so primary are going, to be, are going to be oxidized differently. Secondary are going to be oxidized differently. And tertiary alcohols actually don't get oxidized at all. So you've got, you're going to have three different types of oxidations. And we're going to come back to this molecule. Tiki, we need to figure out primary, secondary, tertiary. And now we're going to come back to this. Uh, so the first one, what happens to a primary alcohol? So a primary alcohol, whenever you have a primary alcohol, and we are talking about its oxidation. So this is a primary alcohol. It's got carbon with two hydrogens, and it's got an OH. And there's a carbon chain. That's my primary alcohol. If I oxidize it, to oxidize this molecule, I would need uh, two reagents. There are going to be two reagents that would be used for the oxidation of this particular particular molecule. Uh, there would be two oxidizing agents. One of them would be K2Cr2O7, which is potassium dichromate. Six, just a second. Hold on a second. Sir, so could you explain the P alcohol thing again, please? I think I'm going to explain that in just a second. Where's the board?
So just a second, it's back. So let's try and do this here. As is the whole thing about primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, and tertiary alcohols. That is, you've got you've got an alcohol. So Anya, the thing was that if you if you have an alcohol, if the alcohol is only bonded to one carbon chain, like the one that's over here, TK, if you can see over here, TK, this alcohol, if it's only bonded to one carbon chain, like the skeletal formula doesn't show you the hydrogen atom. So if that's your that's your primary alcohol. Your secondary alcohol is the one that's bonded to two carbon chains, like the one that you see over here. Okay, this one over here. Uh, this one is bonded to uh, two carbon chains. So that means that there must be one H atom, which which you don't show in the skeletal formula. So that's that's your secondary alcohol. And then you have your, uh, I mean, this one would also be a secondary alcohol because it's bonded to two carbon chains. There's going to be one H, which is not shown. So that is also a secondary alcohol. And you'll have your tertiary alcohols, which would be that if you had an OH group over here, and if you focus on this carbon atom, then that carbon atom is bonded on three sides by a carbon chain. So that one is going to be your, it's going to be your tertiary alcohol. Honey, is this clear? Yes, sir. So we were talking about oxidation of alcohols and oxidation of alcohols is that uh, when you have a primary alcohol, What happens is that you have a carbon chain, it's got an OH, and there's only one R group attached to it. The primary alcohol turns into an aldehyde, and that aldehyde further gets oxidized to a, to a carboxylic acid. So, uh, So there's going to be, there's going to be, uh, I mean, this is what's going to be happening. It will turn into an aldehyde and then it will further get oxidized to a carboxylic acid. So the, all the changes that would, that would happen would happen to this carbon atom over here. That it will first turn into an aldehyde. So it's going to be R, C, double bond O and H. And then it's going to further turn into a carboxylic acid. So everything that would happen would happen to this particular 
carbon atom. It's going to get oxidized and it will turn into an aldehyde and then a carboxylic acid. Now, the reagents that are needed for this are you need K2Cr207 and it should be acidified. That's your oxidizing agent and there should be a reflux. That's number one. Uh, what you can also use, but not preferred, is k 4 That's another oxidizing agent. k 4 acidified, and reflux. Uh, these are your two oxidizing agents. You need to know the color changes of those oxidizing agents. Uh, with K2Cr27, the color change is orange to green. Uh, so you have to know that as well. So for k 4 As a so one second. So for K04, uh, I'm going to write down the color changes as well. This would be orange to green for K2Cr27. Or for K04, it's going to be purple to two colorless. Now, if you want to oxidize uh, uh, the substance to carboxylic acid, uh, the same thing, the same reagents can be used. You can use K2Cr207, acidified and reflux. But there are two more reagents that could be used as well. One of them is tolerance, which is AG. And it's three twice, and it has a charge of plus one. And that gives you, uh, I mean, the observation in that case is a black precipitate and a silver mirror. When the reaction happens, and number three is, uh, number three is, uh, you'll have a filling solution. That's another one that is, it contains copper two plus ions. It's a blue colored solution. Uh, but when it reacts, you need to heat it. When it reacts, uh, what happens is that uh, a red precipitate, is, a brick red precipitate is produced. So that is, that is oxidation of a primary alcohol turning into a, uh, like if I highlight this, a primary alcohol turning into an aldehyde and then it's turning into a carboxylic acid. So this is uh, what's going to, this is the route that's going to be followed uh, during oxidation of primary alcohols. Uh, the reaction is not really going to stop at aldehydes. Uh, what, are, what would happen is, that if you use reflux, the reaction will not stop at aldehyde. It's going to turn, go straight from a primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid. So if you see a primary alcohol over here, and if I just copy paste the whole molecule. So if you see a, see a molecule over here, and just a second. Okay, here's my molecule. So we, whenever you see primary alcohols, like you have got a primary alcohol over here, it's going to turn into a carboxylic acid. That's what's going to happen to it. So this primary alcohol is going to go and what would be left in its place is going to be a carboxylic acid. It will turn into double bond OH. which that is what happens to it. So primary alcohols, the carbon atom that, that was the primary alcohol that will turn into a into a carboxylic acid. So primary alcohols, they turn into 
carboxylic acid. Uh, if you boil it or reflux it with uh, K2Cr207, the reaction will probably not stop at aldehydes. It will continue to carboxylic acid and it will turn into, it will straight turn into a carboxylic acid. Is this clear? Alicia, is this clear? Hanya, is this clear? Yes, sir. And then you've got uh, the second thing, which is what if, remember, uh, what if you want the reaction to stop at an aldehyde? What if I want the reaction to stop at an aldehyde? So what do you do in that case? So if you want to stop at an aldehyde, remember alcohols and carboxylic acid have relatively higher boiling points. I mean, this one has a higher boiling point. The reason is it's capable of forming hydrogen bonds. Do you remember this question was asked? Carboxylic acids, they've got higher boiling points because they also have. So they've got higher boiling points as well because they can form hydrogen bonds as well. So they are capable of forming of forming hydrogen bonds. Because they've got OH groups. I mean, this has an OH group, like you, you've got an alcohol, that's an OH group. You've got a carboxylic acid, it also has an OH group. The aldehyde doesn't have an OH group. So remember this, it's got a lower boiling point. To get the middle one, it's got a lower boiling point. So that means it can't form, it can't form hydrogen bonds. I mean, that's the reason why it doesn't have For hydrogen bonding to happen, you want the molecules uh, for hydrogen bonding to happen. You want the you want the ONAs to be together, which are not together in this case. Now the thing is, uh, how do you stop at an aldehyde? Like, if you want primary alcohols to turn into an aldehyde, what you do is instead of using reflux, you use distillation. Because if you use distillation, then as soon as aldehydes are formed, they've got lower boiling points and they'll escape the container. They'll just evaporate and you can condense it somewhere else. So the aldehyde will be immediately taken out of the container because uh, if you, because remember reflux, when you're refluxing, it, refluxing something, nothing can escape the container because you've put a condenser on top. Everything falls back into the container. Uh, so the aldehyde will eventually react and form carboxylic acid. But if you allow the aldehyde to escape, so it can escape the container and it can, you can prevent further oxidation of the aldehyde. So use distillation instead of reflux. If you want to stop in a, at, at, at aldehydes. If you want to stop at aldehydes, use distillation instead of reflux. If you want to stop at aldehydes, uh, this prevents further oxidation as aldehydes escape the container. So your aldehyde it eventually escapes the container, evaporates, and you simply remove it. So no further oxidation happens for an aldehyde if you use distillation instead of instead of reflux. So remember, remember to use distillation if you want to stop at an aldehyde. And they're going to ask you, why does this work? TK, they, are, they did ask you in one of the papers to give them an explanation for this. So you, you would have to give this, uh, you would have to explain that these two are forming hydrogen bonds. The two of them are, have higher boiling points. Aldehydes have lower boiling point because they can't form hydrogen bonds. So what would happen is as soon as aldehydes are formed, uh, they're going to evaporate and uh, they're going to escape the container. So, so that would prevent further oxidation. So stop using reflux, start using distillation. That is what is needed if you want to stop at aldehydes. 
And remember, if you if your starting point is an aldehyde, you can turn an aldehyde into a carboxylic acid by using tolens and felling as well, and with K two Cr two O seven as well, and K O four as well. You can remember K O four can also be used here, but K O four is generally avoided because it's too strong an oxidizing agent. You do you do use K O four with alkenes, but generally with alcohols you don't. You prefer not to use K O four, although it's going to do the same thing. Uh, let's move to secondary alcohols. So we've got secondary alcohols and secondary alcohols. What will happen with secondary alcohols is they're going to turn into ketones. So when the when you oxidize them, they simply turn into ketones. That is the oxidation of secondary alcohols. So this is what. This is what a secondary alcohol looks like. It's got two carbon chains. And when it gets oxidized, focus on the carbon over here. This carbon will turn into a ketone. So the carbon chains would be intact, except that this carbon atom over here will turn into a ketone. So they would, it would become cedal bond O, that's it. So if I go back and if I look at the molecule uh, that we drew, whenever you see secondary alcohols, like these molecules over here, whenever you see secondary alcohols, uh, what you can do is you can, uh, it will turn into a ketone. So this will simply turn into double bond over that set. It will turn into a ketone. Same happens with this secondary alcohol. You've got an alcohol, I mean, that's a tertiary alcohol, so we can sort of leave that. Uh, secondary alcohol, this is a secondary alcohol, it will turn into, into a ketone, that's it. And the last one is that our tertiary alcohols are not going to get oxidized, that's it. I said, what are the reagents that are used? Uh, you're gonna use the same reagents, uh, which we can simply copy paste. Uh, you're going to use the same reagents, uh, K2Cr2O7, acidified, and reflux. And the other one over here would be KMNO4, acidified, and reflux. That could also be used. But ketones don't get oxidized. The oxidation is going to stop at ketones. And for tertiary alcohols, no oxidation. So tertiary alcohols will have absolutely no oxidation whatsoever. So they are resistant to oxidation. So you've got three types of alcohols. You've got, uh, you've got primary alcohols, you've got secondary alcohols, you've got tertiary alcohols. Uh, primary alcohols will get oxidized to aldehydes and then they'll, they'll further get oxidized to carboxylic acids. Uh, secondary alcohols will turn into ketones and then you'll have tertiary alcohols which will have absolutely no oxidation whatsoever, TK. So remember this, uh, so I'll, I'll do another example. So here's a molecule. So let's say this is the molecule. It's got an OH group here. It's got an OH group here and it's got an OH over here. And it's got an OH over here as well. So I need to figure out what, what would happen to this molecule. Uh, what type of oxidation is going to happen? So let's, I said this one. So let's try and first thing, we need to figure out uh, which one is this one. This one is, this carbon is bonded to one carbon chain, TK. I mean, the OH, the carbon is bonded to just one carbon chain. So that's your, what? That's your primary alcohol. What about this OH? The carbon, focus on the carbon, it's bonded to two carbon chains. That's your secondary alcohol. Which one is this one? OH. The carbon over here is bonded to three carbon chains. So that's your tertiary alcohol. 
this one over here, the OH carbon is bonded to just one carbon chain. So that's your primary alcohol once more. So the first thing, let's focus on the primary alcohols. That's your primary alcohol. This is your primary alcohols. What did we study? Like if you try to oxidize it, primary alcohols will turn into, primary alcohols will turn into aldehydes, and then they will turn into, eventually they'll turn into carboxylic acids. So primary alcohols, turn them into carboxylic acid. So that's what we're going to do. This one and this one. Both of them are going to turn into carboxylic acid. They would become double bond O and OH. Same thing over here, double bond O and OH. So they'll turn into carboxylic acids. That's the first thing, TK. Is this clear? Sorry, clear, Zaheb. Hania, if I... So, yes. I said, what about secondary alcohols? You got uh, secondary alcohols. Secondary alcohols, I told you, were, were going to turn into ketones. So you got a secondary alcohol over here. That will simply turn into a ketone. So get rid of the OH and make it a make it a ketone. And then you have the tertiary alcohol. Get, nothing is going to happen to the tertiary alcohol. That would remain exactly as it is. Okay, so that's your oxidation product. And what you need to know is the different reagents that you're going to use. K2Cr2O7, KMNO4 usually works. But remember, for aldehydes, you're going to have three more, tollens and felling. And for secondary alcohols, I mean, it's usually K2Cr2O7 or KMNO4. Just, for, just remember, for, for these, you're going to have tollens and felling as well. So that's, that's all about oxidation. So we did uh, the whole oxidation. Uh, uh, I'm just going to try. To leave this. So we, we're going to do uh, some past paper questions now, TK. We're done with oxidation. So we're going to do, try and do some Ask for a question. If I sponsor, Sir, have we finished um the chapter? No, we actually haven't. TK. Honey, I'll, I'll discuss this. TK, uh, you can leave the class if you if you if you don't have to do past papers at the moment. TK, we did we did oxidation at the moment. TK, this one. Oxy, this is still not loading. Just a second. I said we did oxidation of alcohols in this class. TK, just make sure you. Note this down. TK, I just wanted to copy this. Uh, and paste this. TK, this board is loading now. So I'm going to put the oxidation part. Think it's here. So um, for the rest, uh, just we'll do a few questions, organic questions. Uh, just a second, nine seven zero one. As so I think we were doing five cons of paper, Sir, yeah, yeah. I think M S twenty one. Okay, this is summer 21 and we're going to do organic sea start color the TK. March 21. March 21, TK. Just one second.
I say you can't March 21. Yes, 1 2. I say eight second of numbers. I start cannot take it. You go just get the pull up paper. We will pull up paper. Curly eight second. Let's see if we can in just one second. Uh, paper when it's equal and March. So March 21 calling. Okay, 9701. March 21, QP12. So March 21, uh, one, two, TK. So we were doing this one, TK. Uh, this may be okay. I was clear out, you know. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so, um, it's me, hey, okay. Uh, So let's start. But let's say to start. Okay, let's start. Okay. But then back say to start here. Let's start. Okay, let's start with the first one. Uh, the first one is uh, the table shows the number of protons and neutrons and electrons in four different particles. So you the balls on it. Two isotopes. So which one get two isotopes? Uh, different number of same protons. Different number of neutrons. Right? Which one answer? What's the answer? It's a little bit tricky. But what's the answer? A. Uh, w N Y. ठीक है क्योंकि X B हो सकता है लेकिन X is not an atom ठीक है उसका ion है it's a negative ion. तो uh, वरना X is also an isotope of the two but uh, same number of protons. नहीं uh, X isotope ही नहीं actually वो same number of neutrons है ठीक है forget that. I said, where in the periodic table is the element that has that has an outer shell electron shell arrangement of 4s2, 4p3? Directly, but on a chia group, eh? group, um, five, group five. Take it, remember, group one is s1, group two, electronic configuration is s2, group three is s2p1, and so on. Group four is going to be s2p2, and group five is going to be s2. P3 of our end, S2P6 until the end. So this one is group uh, 5 or 15. And 4 is the shell number. That's your period number. So that's 4. So it's going to be, it's going to be D. TK 4 shell ka element hoga. So it's going to be D. Next one is substance Q is a hydrocarbon. When 1 grams of Q is burnt, 3.32 grams of uh, carbon dioxide is produced. What could be the identity of Q. I said so this one is just a time consuming question because you have to uh, you have to solve it for every one of them. Okay. Ki ye data kis ke match hoga. So it's just a waste of time. Cyclohexene is going to be what? Uh, C6? Kya hoga? Ye bhi must like. It's rather time consuming. Hai ki you figure out the formula of cyclohexene. Uh, cyclohexane would have been C6H12. If you put a double bond, then you get rid of two hydrogens. So uh, that would be H10. But just to confirm, let's go draw B Carlo. So you put a double bond, uh, one H, one H, two H's, two H's, two H's, two H's. So count all the H atoms. That's going to be that's going to be 10. So it's going to be C6 H10, right? So usko burn kare or uh, one gram hai. a moles de kalo. One gram make it the moles on one divided by a find the MR. Uh, what's the MR? Six carbons, six carbons, 12 into six. What is 12 into six? 72, 72 plus 10. That's 82. Get the moles money. Mass divided by MR. 
how many moles is this? Kyaar is a eight calculator. Zero point zero one two. Zero point zero one two. So you're getting zero point zero one two moles. Now tell me, six carbon, then so how many carbon dioxide would be produced? Six carbon dioxide, right? So the ratio is one molecule is going to produce. It's going to produce six carbon dioxide. So, point zero one two into six. Karo, kya hota hai? What's point zero one two into six? It's zero point zero point zero seven three. Chalo, thik hai seven three seven two. Thik hai. Acha, so is three point two two grams the same thing? Kitne moles are three point two two grams? That's uh three point two two mass divided by the amount of carbon dioxide, which is forty four. So, how many moles is that? फॉर्मुला ठीक है वॉट एवर आई एन ओ एस सो ओरिजिनली थॉट इट वॉज आई एन ओ एंड बाई एक्सपेरिमेंट दिस शोर दैट फोर पॉइंट एट ग्राम्स ऑफ इंडियम कम्बाइंड विद वन ग्राम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन प्रोड्यूस फाइव पॉइंट एट ग्राम्स ऑफ इंडियम ऑक्साइड द ए आर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन वॉज नोन टू बी सिक्सटीन विच विच वैल्यू ऑफ द ए आर ऑफ इंडियम इज कैलकुलेटेड यूजिंग दीज डेटा तो इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑन इम्पेरिकल फॉर्मुलाज बट इन रिवर्स के रेशो पहले ही पता है वॉट्स द रेशो One ratio one, right? It's got indium, it's got oxygen, right? And we know that the final ratio, the empirical formula, is going to come out to be one ratio one, right? So we have the mass even. We have four point eight grams of this, and we have uh, one gram of this. So, but how do you find the empirical formula? The empirical formula is found. Okay, so first step, what is it? You divide by the AR. Indium ki AR, we have no idea. Oxygen is sixteen. आ गया फिर उसके बाद इनका जो रेशो है दैट शुड कम आउट टू बी इनके जो मोल्स का रेशो है मास डिवाइड बाय एम आर ठीक है आई फाइंड द मोल्स ऑफ इंडियम आई फाइंड द मोल्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन वंस आई फाइंड दोस मोल्स तो उनका रेशो क्या आना चाहिए दैट इट शुड कम आउट टू बी वन रेशो वन राइट तो इट शुड कम आउट टू बी वन रेशो वन तो इसका मतलब इफ आई क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाई द रेशो शुड कम आउट टू बी वन रेशो वन आई नो द आंसर ठीक है वो अक्सर इससे पहले क्या होता था आप रेशो फाइंड कर रहे होते थे बट द थिंग इज उसको आप एक्स यू पुट दैट एज एक्स यू ट्राई टू फिगर आउट द रेशो राइट बट वो है द रेशो इज ऑलरेडी नोन सो दैट मींस बोथ मोल्स शुड कम आउट टू बी एग्जैक्टली द सेम 4.8 डिवाइड बाय एक्स इज बेसिकली इक्वल टू 1 डिवाइड बाय 16 इफ यू सॉल्व फॉर दिस तो व्हाट वुड यू गेट टेक द एक्स ऑन द अदर साइड टेक 16 ऑन द अदर साइड व्हाट 16 इनटू 4.8 76.8 तो इसका मतलब है आंसर इज बी राइट ठीक है क्लियर है कि इंपेरिकल फॉर्मूलास में यू फाइंड द मोल्स ऑफ ईच एटम डिवाइडिंग द मास बाय द एयर दैट्स द फर्स्ट स्टेप अब फिर आप रेशियो निकाल सकते हैं द रेशियो इज ऑलरेडी नोन इट्स 1 रेशियो 1 तो इसका मतलब है द मोल्स ऑफ दिस वुड बी इक्वल टू द मोल्स ऑफ दिस थिंग बिकॉज़ इट्स 1 रेशियो 1 फाइस क्लियर है यस सर अच्छा इसके बाद इन विच सब्सटेंस आर द ओनली इंटरमोलिकुलर फोर्सेस टेंपरेरी डायपोल इंड्यूस्ड डायपोल अट्रैक्शन सो एवरी मॉलिक्यूल हैज वैन डर वॉल्स फोर्सेस रिमेम्बर इज टॉकिंग अबाउट वैन डर वॉल्स फोर्सेस एवरी मॉलिक्यूल हैज वैन डर वॉल्स फोर्सेस बट ओनली द नॉन पोलर मॉलिक्यूल्स आर द वंस सी कार्बन एंड हाइड्रोजन रिमेम्बर हैव द सेम इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिविटी ठीक है दिस इज ऑक्टेन आई मीन ऑक्टेन इज सी8h18 So carbon and hydrogens have almost the same electronegativity. So, so all of them have Van der Waals forces. But in this, there's there's only going to be just Van der Waals forces because there is no dipole. Baki ho ke the dipoles hain. Like HCl has a dipole. Cl is partial negative and partial positive. So, so an HCl molecule has Van der Waals forces because electrons would be bumping around. They would be moving around. So there would be some fluctuating dipoles getting produced. But it's got a permanent dipole as well. Methanol has OH that's got hydrogen bonding that's an extreme form of a dipole. Water has O and H bonded together so that's also a very very polar 
a very, very polar molecule. So the only one that's not having uh, Van der Waals, uh, or I said the only one uh, that has only Van der Waals forces, that's C8HAD. You've got a solution containing 0 0.025 grams of sulfur dioxide in one dm cube of water. What, which volume of sulfur dioxide measured at 50 centigrade and a pressure, so this is PV0 NRT, must be added to one dm cube of water to produce this solution. So the question is, so the question is simple. I mean, he's, he's saying what volume of sulfur dioxide, right? So you already have the moles of sulfur dioxide. You can find the moles. Uh, can anyone tell me how, how many moles you've got? Okay, how would you find the moles? Mass divided by MR. So moles would be what? 0 0.25. Okay, and you're going to divide that by the MR of sulfur dioxide, which is two oxen. So that is uh, 32 plus 32, that's 64. Clear? How many moles do you get for sulfur dioxide? 3.9 times 10 power minus 3. So look, you MCQ, you don't need to... For, need 10 to respond, how many? Minus 3. Minus 3, so okay, moles are okay. I said, you've got, you've got these moles, right? Uh, so PV0 energy, you have the pressure, which is Pascal's 1 times 10 power 5. You want to find the volume. You have the moles even, which is 4 times 10 power minus 3 moles. And R is 8.31. And you also have the temperature, which is 50 to centigrade, but it should be in Kelvin. In Kelvin, it's going to be 323. Let's go back and solve. Karo. Okay, just get this on this side. Divide that by 1 times 10 power 5. So what do you get quickly? I say plus nahi hai, this is into e plus mein galat ki hai. Not plus, it's multiplication. So what are we getting? Um, one point one in into the bar minus four. I said, oh yeah, answer Joga, that would be in meter cube, right? So how do you turn meter cube into CM cube? TK, remember this conversion as well. Uh, if you want to turn meter cube into CM cube, uh, you have to multiply it by uh, 1 million, 10 is plus six. TK, remember this conversion. CM cube, DM cube, meter cube. If you're going this way, you keep dividing by 1,000. If you're coming back from meter cube to uh, centimeter cube, you're going to multiply it by... Uh, confirm a 1.1 or 1.05. As I, I think I... 1.1. Where do you add? 105? Yeah, cube. TK. Yes. So 105 cm cube. I said next is an experiment was performed to determine the enthalpy change of combustion of ethanol. So, uh, in, this is about MC delta T. So, the data is collected. So, combustion of ethanol. He's burning ethanol, and the heat energy passes to water over here. Okay, thermometer lagave. The temperature is measured, and the heat energy is going. It's going to the water. Now, uh, the question is, what's going to what's going to happen? Uh, the mass of water is given. So the heat, heat energy produced, that's Q is equal to MC delta T. So you're given, you're given the mass of water. What's the mass of water? That's 12. These are not 12, but W. Uh, did he give you the specific heat capacity of water? That's 4.2. So that's 4.2. And what's the temperature change? The temperature rise is given. That's Y degree centigrade. So that is Y. And whenever you see temperature rise, that means the reaction is exothermic. So make sure you put a negative sign over there. So this is what's happening. W into 4.2 into Y, right? So which expression can be used to calculate the enthalpy change of combustion of ethanol in kilojoules? So this is the heat energy produced. 
first thing. How many moles of ethanol were burnt? So find the moles of ethanol that produced this much energy. The moles of ethanol are, what's the mass of ethanol? That's X grams, mass divided by the MR, which is given. Molar mass is given, Z grams. So those are the moles. The next part is you're going to use ratios. The next part is, this is what you're going to do. Give me itne moles ke liye, x over z grams ke liye, the amount of energy that was produced was this much. Minus w times 4.2 times delta t, which is y. Is this clear? Sanu, okay. clear? To ye aagya. Sir, lekin divide nahi karte thousand se. Kis ko divide karna thousand se? Energy se. Kye wo joules mein aati hai. नहीं अभी तो वो इशू है कि उसने किस में मांगा हुआ है उसने किलो जूस में वैसे मांगा हुआ है तो डिवाइड करना है थाउजेंड से अवेंचली ठीक है तुम्हारी बात ठीक है लेकिन पहले तो वो काम करो ना फर्स्ट थिंग इज ये वाई बाई जी ग्राम्स नहीं है सॉरी दिस इज मोल्स ठीक है वो थाउजेंड वाला काम करना है क्योंकि उसने एंड में किलो जूस में मांगा हुआ है ठीक है क्योंकि आंसर इज किलो जूस वो देख लेना पहले ठीक है यू हैव टू बी केयरफुल माइनस डब्ल्यू Times four point two times y, or that should be divided by x over z. So x over z is divided. Karo ke to z would go upwards, right? Ah, uh, isko main zara dusra x kar le to. So, okay, this is enough. And you're going to divide by thousand as well. E yoga. If you divide by x over z, it's going to give you. X नीचे रह जाएगा Z is going to come at the top. So this is what's going to happen. This would be your answer. So it's going to be minus four point two W Y Z minus four point two W Y Z or नीचे one thousand X होगा. So that's going to be A. A is going to be your answer in this case. Is this clear? Yes, sir. As I play next one. Uh, you've got VOCl2 or oxidation reduction, so you have to figure out the. He's ox saying the oxidation state of Cl is minus one in दोनों में. तो निकालने के लिए I think V की निकालनी है. So find the oxidation state of V. V is unknown. I mean, I'm going to try and do this. X oxidation is minus two times two. Cl उसने पहले ही कह रही है. He's already told you Cl is minus one, so it's going to be zero. So what is x coming out to be? It's coming out to be minus four minus one. That's uh, minus uh, five. That's going to come out to be plus five. So v over here is what? It's plus five. Is this clear? Yeah. अच्छा फिर v और cl two में भी निकाल लो कि क्या है भई ये v is x oxygen is minus two and there are two cl's minus one into two and the total charge is zero. So x comes out to be what? Minus four plus four. So V is coming out to be plus four. Its meaning is V is getting reduced. Is this clear? Yes. Do say a car lock. Who's getting oxides then? That's obviously iodine. Because iodine is minus one and iodine is zero over here. So iodine, iodine is the one that's getting. Well, the very obvious thing because two elements to reduce won't be enough. So it's getting oxidized. Acha, in which reaction is water behaving as a base? Base accepts H plus one ions or produces OH ions. Acha, where is water accepting H plus one ions? In which reaction? B. Hmm. B. Okay, B. Then obviously it's accepting. H plus one ions. ठीक है, so it's going to be, it's going to be B. यहाँ पे everywhere else it's it's behaving as an acid. 
वाटर था इट टर्न इन टू ओ एच एन सो इट लॉस्ट इन एच प्लस वाटर था यहाँ पे दिस इज रीडॉक्स रिएक्शन दिस इज नॉट एन एसिड बेस्ड रिएक्शन यहाँ पे भी वॉटर इज बिहेविंग एज एन एसिड वाटर था एंड इट टर्न इन टू ओ एच एन सो इट बेसिकली लॉस्ट इन एच प्लस वन आइन ठीक है अच्छा लार्ज एक्सेस ऑफ मार्बल चिप्स इज रिएक्टेड विद हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड तो पहले तो मोल्स वैसे ही निकालो क्या हो गई ये कितना बनता है या सिंपली ठीक है रिजल्ट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द रिएक्शन रिपीटेड विद अच्छा मोल्स का तो क्वेश्चन नहीं था अभी निकाल रहे अच्छा वॉट वुड बी नहीं एक्चुअली मोल्स का है इसके मोल्स कितने बन रहे हैं? 16 चेक कर लेना मैंने वैसे जल्दी से कर लिया ठीक है पॉइंट जीरो थ्री मोल्स अच्छा फर्स्ट थिंग किस पे रिएक्शन ज्यादा होगा कि कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड गैस किस पे ज्यादा प्रोड्यूस होगी दिस वन यू हैव मोर हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड रिमेम्बर द मार्बल चिप्स आर इन एक्सेस so the limiting reagent is the hydrochloric acid so you get more hydrochloric acid there's going to be more reaction theek hai so more the reaction more products would be formed in this one in the second reaction theek hai there's going to be more products but is it going to be a faster reaction or is it going to be a slower reaction is the second wala this one kya hoga is it faster or is it slower ठीक है स्लो है क्यों क्योंकि कॉन्सेंट्रेशन कम है ठीक है सो द रिएक्शन तो हाउ इज द रिजल्ट डिफरेंट द रिएक्शन इज स्लोअर एंड मोर ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट्स आर मेड व्हेन द रिएक्शन इज कंप्लीट सो इट्स गोइंग टू बी सी कि इट्स गोइंग टू बी स्लो बट मोर ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट्स आर गोइंग टू बी फॉर्मड ओवरऑल क्लियर है सर स्लो क्यों हो रहा है क्योंकि कॉन्सेंट्रेशन कम है वन मोल पर टीम की थी सो Yeah, it's more concentrated, so it's going to be a faster reaction. And the other one is uh, 0.5 mole per dm cube, so it's a slower reaction. Clear? Okay. I said next one, Boltzmann distribution. Okay, the particles are distributed. Most particles are having energy that is, I mean, average energy. This is energy. Okay. Okay. Low energy, low energy would be fewer particles. Very high energy, there would be fewer particles. Okay. सो हाई एनर्जी पे कम पार्टिकल्स होंगे लो एनर्जी पे कम पार्टिकल्स होंगे मोस्ट पार्टिकल्स वुड हैव एनर्जी दैट वुड बी क्लोज टू द एवरेज एनर्जी सो नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स यहां पे ज्यादा होंगे हाउ डू दिस डायग्राम प्रिपेयर इफ द मिक्सचर इज एट अ हायर टेंपरेचर हायर टेंपरेचर पे वेयर वुड द कर्व शिफ्ट एट अ हायर टेंपरेचर राइट टू द राइट ठीक है एंड इट विल फ्लैटन आउट हाई एनर्जी पे नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स ज्यादा हो जाएंगे लो एनर्जी पे नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स एक्चुअली कम हो जाएंगे ठीक है तो उधर से उठ जाएगी इधर से नीचे हो जाएगी सो सो द क्वेश्चन इज ई ए को कुछ होगा डस व्हाट व्हाट एनीथिंग हैपन टू द टू ई ए द वैल्यूज अच्छा सो द वैल्यू ऑफ बोथ ई ए कैटलाइज एंड आई मीन पहला तो गलत है द फर्स्ट वन इज रॉन्ग सो डी इज द आंसर आई मीन द होल क्वेश्चन वाज अबाउट ई ए I mean the actuation energy would remain exactly the same. The reaction is going to be faster because earlier number of particles having energy greater or equal to actuation energy was lesser. But if you increase temperature, now you've got a lot more particles having energy that is greater than the actuation energy. So the reaction is the reaction is faster now. I said, which observations are made when a sample of silicon chloride is added to a beaker of water? So. so ye inorganic hai uh, what would happen if sicl4 is added to water a very vigorous hydrolysis will happen sio2 and hcl gas is going to be produced and you're going to see fumes of hcl and a precipitate both are absorbed uh, observed white fumes are produced remember hcl ki ek hi observation hai always white fumes are produced and sio2 is a solid that's going to give you a precipitate so uh both of them would be observed theek hai 
Which row is correct? A uh, statement: the first ionization energy of phosphorus is greater than that of magnesium. So, I mean, the first one is you're moving across the period. What happens across the period? Ionization energy increases, dips, starts increasing again, dips, starts increasing again. You have dips at group six. So he's talking about magnesium, and he's talking about phosphorus. So why do ionization energies increase across the period? What's the what's the reason for that? Why do they increase? The nuclear charge increases and the shielding effect remains constant. Okay, and the distance slightly decreases. Okay, because more protons are there, nuclear charge is more, so uh, there's more or greater attraction for electrons. So when you move across the period, uh, okay, you have got more protons, more nuclear charge, shielding is constant, distance. Slightly or gradually decreases because other protons only the electrons are more strongly attracted. So the reason is wrong. I said next one: the melting point of phosphorus is greater than that of magnesium. That is absolutely wrong. Because period three, my melting points are what? That you have uh, sodium, which has kind of a low melting point around uh, less than hundred. Uh, magnesium, aluminium, these are metals. Silicon is a lot more than. Phosphorus is actually काफी कम होता है. Phosphorus is a covalent molecule, ठीक है. Sulfur, then you've got chlorine, and then you've got argon, ठीक है. ये sodium का थोड़ा सा ऊपर कर लो. Around 100 या 90, 90 से 90, 80, 90 एक रीब होता है उसका melting point, ठीक है. As the first statement is wrong, magnesium has a pretty high melting point. Phosphorus has a lower melting point. The atomic radius of phosphorus is smaller than that of magnesium. That is true. Across the period, मैंने कहा distance gradually decreases होता है. Because of the greater nuclear charge, so it is C, definitely C. Okay, so that's clear. Clear us, Haruko. Yes. Yes, sir. As the next one, which row correctly describes one property of barium and one property of barium oxide? So observation when barium metal is added to water, so it's going to be a vigorous reaction. Uh, because remember, down the group reactivity increases. So a few gas bubbles form on the metal surface. Not true. It's going to be a reactive reaction. Rapid, rapid effervescence would be seen. As a pH of the solution of barium oxide, barium oxide, remember, is very soluble. So when it dissolves, okay, it turns into barium hydroxide. It produces a lot of ions because it's very soluble. It dissociates. Lots of OH ions are produced. So the pH is close to thirteen. So it's going to be D. Remember, hydroxide's key is solubility, you know. जो टॉप पे होता है ना मैग्नीशियम हाइड्रोक्साइड और ऑक्साइड दैट डज नॉट डिसॉल्व तो उसका पीएच ऑलमोस्ट न्यूट्रल होता है इट्स ऑलमोस्ट न्यूट्रल अराउंड स्लाइटली ग्रेटर देन सेवन एट तक होता है एट टू नाइन लेकिन डाउन द ग्रुप व्हेन यू मूव डाउन द ग्रुप दे डिसॉल्व इन वाटर एंड दे प्रोड्यूस अ लॉट ऑफ ओएच एंड व्हेन दे डिसोसिएट सो हाइड्रोक्साइड्स बिकम मोर सॉल्युबल एज अ 15 15 इज Okay, you've got a you've got a white salt heated strongly for thirty mi mi minutes. A mixture of gases is given off. The solid remaining in the test tube is then dissolved in a small volume of hydrochloric acid. And uh, addition of a few drops of sulfuric acid to the test tube causes a white precipitate to form. Sulfuric acid. You guess who's got tested sulfuric acid? I mean, who forms? I mean that indicates this barium because remember barium ions. If they react with sulfate ions, if the two ion solution are present, they will combine together and BaSO4 is insoluble, so they'll form a precipitate. So in the solution, where you've got barium ions and you also have sulfate ions, so they'll get together to form a precipitate of barium sulfate solid. Remember sulfate ions, which uh, sorry barium ions, which are test, and you add sulfate ions to it. एम जी के साथ नहीं होगा एम जी बिकॉज इफ मैग्नीशियम आइन आर प्रेजिडेंट सोल्यूशन एंड यू एड सल्फेरिक एसिड एंड इट हेज सल्फेट आइन्स देन एम जी एस ओ फोर इज सॉलेबल इट सॉलेबल दे नॉट गोइंग टू गेट टूगेदर दे नॉट गोइंग टू फॉर्म अ प्रेसिपिटेट ठीक है इज दिस क्लियर फाइव क्लियर अच्छा अब ये के तो बैरियम तो कन्फर्म हो गया ठीक है एंड देन ही से 
a mixture of gases given off. So that's going to be barium nitrate. Okay, barium nitrate jump decompose with that, it produces barium oxide plus uh, also produces NO2 plus also produces oxygen gas. So a mixture of gases is produced. With barium carbonate, you're not going to get a mixture of gases. The only thing you're going to get is carbon dioxide. That's it. Either you're going to get two gases. So it's so the answer is B in this case. So yeah. Yes. Okay. So, chlorine ke do reactions with NH. You don't know what you If you react chlorine, it be inorganic. If you react chlorine with cold NH, what's going to be produced? NH. So, NH, not NH, NH is how to react. What's going to be produced is going to be NaCl plus NaClO plus water. If you have chlorine, ko cold NOH. Ke if you react it with hot NOH, temperature above 70 degrees centigrade, concentrated, what's going to happen is uh, it's going to produce NaCl. It's going to produce NaClO3. And it's also going to produce H2. Take it, remember these two reactions. Uh, so, kisme, what's again? Chlorine goes from 0 to minus 1 and 0 to plus 1. So, that's this one. Because the other one is hot anyway, so the chlorine actually goes to plus 5. So it's going to be cold, dilute, alkaline conditions. Is this clear? Yes. And when it's test it, it's silver salt. It's silver ions with precipitate. That is a white precipitate. With Cl-1, it's a white precipitate. With Br-1, it's a cream precipitate. With I-1, it's a yellow precipitate. So, in this case, we're dealing with Cl-1, so you're going, to get a, you're going to get a white precipitate in this case. It says, concentrate sulfuric acid reacts with iodide, and the products are these. Which statement is correct? Uh, H2SO4 reacts with this powerful reducing agent, which is NaI. Remember, I minus one ko electron lose ka nega bot shock hota because it's a bigger ion and it loses electrons very, very easily. So it turns into iodine. And who gains electrons? Sulfur. So sulfur is plus six over here. Usneka, it, it forms all these products. It produces iodine, sulfur, uh, H2S, and sulfur dioxide. Yahajaga sulfur reduce order. This is minus two, this is plus four. So sulfur originally was plus six. And now it's getting reduced uh, to zero, minus two, or plus four. So hydrogen sulfide is the product of a reduction reaction. So was TKA a is fine. It is a product of a reduction reaction. That's fine. Is this clear? Or or baki jo statements and iodide ions are strong. I mean they're very good reducing agents. They're not they're not oxidizing agents. Uh, sulfur atoms are both oxidized and reduced. That's not true. They're, they're, just, they're just reduced. Plus 6 to 0, that's reduced. Sulfur atoms are not oxidized, so that's also wrong. I so said this one, uh, catalytic converter, you've got oxides of carbon, unburnt hydrocarbons in the exhaust gases. When catalytic converters are used to remove these compounds, what happens to each of the compounds? What the NO and NO2, what do they turn into? They turn into nitrogen. These two compounds they turn into nitrogen gas, so they get reduced. So, I mean, C or D. What happens to carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide gets oxidized. Okay, so it gets oxidized. What happens to the hydrocarbons? They also get oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. So, the answer is C. Okay, and uh, that is what a catalytic converter does. The NO two and the nitrogen oxides, they lose their oxygens, and these two, they end up gaining oxygens. And less harmful products are formed. You've got methylamine, and it has similar chemical properties to ammonia. Methylamine reacts with hydrogen chloride to form a white crystalline. Salt, uh, when he says methylamine has similar chemical properties to ammonia, he's basically talking about ammonia. So, so I mean, think of this as ammonia. This is NH3 reacting with HCl and forming NH4Cl. As a sample of methylamine is heated with sodium hydroxide, methylamonium chloride, NH4Cl. 
I said, what happens when ammonium salts? So I'm going to think of this as ammonia. I'm not going to think of it as methyl ammonium chloride. I said, what happens when you react uh, an ammonium salt with NOH? Salt, water, and ammonia is produced. NaCl is going to be produced. Water is going to be produced. And NH3 is going to be given off. Okay, this will be reaction. So what are the products? Uh, the products would be water and ammonia. Uh, where is water and ammonia? And there's going to be a salt. I said not ammonia. It's methylamine. Ban jayega, hai? So it's going to be methylamine, sodium chloride, and water. Remember, this is what he was talking. This this is what he was calling uh, ammonia. He said that methylamine has similar chemical properties to ammonia. So, this reaction, this reaction, hoga, this would be CH3, NH3 plus one. Cl minus one, I'm just going to copy it with NOH. NaCl will be produced. Water is going to be produced. And the ammonium ion turns into ammonia. It loses an H plus one. So the methyl methyl ammonium ion turns into methylamine back again. But see, you can see the reaction and the reaction will be copied. NH4 plus one turns back into NH3. So as CH3, NH3 plus one turns back into CH3, NH2. Is this clear? Sir, yeah. NH2 or HCl reaction has to be acid base. Is this one? Yes. 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 No, this is definitely, no, definitely acid-based reaction, right? Because H plus 1, this, the acid loses an H plus 1. And the N is not just loan pair. It's NH2 joiner that accepts an H plus 1. So it is an acid-based reaction. Clear? Five is this clear? And this is also an acid based reaction. Is your ammonium salts one? And this is also an acid based reaction. NH4 plus one loses an H plus one, turns into NH3. So basically, that's acting as an acid. And who gains H plus one? The OH ions, they gain H plus one, they turn into water. So that is an acid base reaction. Let's say, uh, how many chiral centers are present? So, uh, is, this is not chiral. Chiral, care, you need four different groups. Uh, zero. This this can't be chiral. Well, if I draw this, it's got carboxylic acid. It's got an which. So the beach will be chiral. No, so that you get top or bottom same. So it's going to be zero. Citric acid is going to have zero. Uh, chiral centers. What about this one? This one, if I draw this CH2, so that's definitely not chiral. Carboxylic acid is definitely not chiral. You've got CH, COH, and then you've got CH with an OH. And again, there is COH. Now you've got two chiral centers. Because it could be charo groups different, as it could be charo groups different. So it's going to be it's going to be D. TK, is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay, let's stop here. This is the end of the beach. Okay, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.